Special Service Division invites you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations to drop in at Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's with the elite meat eat. Archie, the manager, speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Kate Smith? Yeah, she'll be here any minute. And Duffy, with Kate Smith, Smith singing here, will them shekels roll in? Shekels. Out-of-town customers. <laughs> Why, Duffy, do you know how many people listen to Kate's program every Friday night? What? Five hundred. <laughs> Duffy, what would you say if I told you Kate Smith has over a thousand listeners? <laughs> Maybe even two thousand. Well, on 2,000, I wouldn't bet you. <laughs> well, uh, Duffy, you see, according to statistics, uh, <laughs> there, uh, there is one radio for every two and a half people. Well, take them around here. Now, uh, uh, Callahan's got a set, but uh, Moriarty ain't got a set, and uh, neither has Happy Maguire, the midget. <laughs> So you see, that's uh, one set for every two and a half people. <laughs> what? Well, Duffy, the half a person don't have to be a midget. Well, it could be uh, like uh, half Indian, or, uh, <laughs> half Eskimo, or even uh, like me, Duffy. I just, I just done this, Archer. I'm uh, painting a welcome sign on this table for it, Daddy. Oh. Uh, here, listen to it. Uh, welcome, Kate Smith, both uh, genial and boisterous. You are to us what pearls is to oysterous. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? If only this wasn't such a crummy-looking table for it. Well, it goes well with that poem. <laughs> listen, Eddie, don't think it was such an easy job writing this poem. I had to arrange the letters in the word boisterous so that the gravy stain just dots the eye. Well, uh, how about Mr. Collins? Ain't you going to welcome him? Collins? Did Napoleon welcome the Duke of Waterloo? <laughs> but Mr. Collins is Miss Smith's manager. I know, it, but she'll get wise to him, believe me. <laughs> what would you think of a manager who, if it wasn't for him, Kate Smith could have been singing here in Duffy's for the last ten years? Now, that man ain't no manager. Right. He's a guardian angel. <laughs> Miss Archer, take my advice. Paint a welcome sign for him, too. Oh, all right. I'll get you another tablecloth to paint it on. Table? Never mind, Eddie. For Collins, I'll use a dish towel. But once Kate Smith signed that legal contract that I drew up... Legal contract? Oh, man, what do you know about law? What do I know about the law? Didn't I work in a legal firm of Flyshack, a Bushwhack, a Millstone, and Briggs? <laughs> and Flyshacker? <laughs> and Millstone? Ooh, that sounds like an awful lot of windows to wash. <laughs> Eddie, I was not a window washer. You mean you was a lawyer there? Well, not exactly a lawyer, but they uh, treated me just like a lawyer. <laughs> Everybody used to call me Archie the Shyster. <laughs> now, uh, Eddie, uh, kindly witness this contract here by prefixing it with your uh, John Hancock, huh? Nothing doing. The last paper I signed got me this job here. But this is different, Eddie. This is just, uh, you know, a habeas scorpion, you know, a, a witness. Uh, go ahead and sign it there. Well, okay. Here we are. John Hancock. Ah. That's the idea. Now we need one more. Uh, hey, Finnegan. Uh, yeah, I... Finnegan, I need you as a witness. Uh... Oh, sure, Arch. I saw the whole thing. You was only going 15 miles an hour, and the other guy passed the red light. <laughs> He passed the red light, and he hit you right in the rumble seat. No, Finnegan, I want you to witness this uh, legal contract here. Oh, I'm sorry, Arch, but it, uh, I cannot sign no papers without seeing my lawyer. Well, um, I know the law. See me. All right. Uh, Your Honor, should I sign this paper? Yes. Okay. 
right. Now, here, sign it uh, right here like Eddie did. Uh. All right. Let's see. Uh, John Hancock. Thanks, Winningham. <laughs> Yeah, let's look over this list now. Uh, polished mirror, uh, dusty chandelier, make Van Steeden shave, um, change the fly paper, uh, hide Duffy's picture. And... Archie! Yes, Miss Duffy? Guess who I bunked into today? <laughs> All right, who did you bunk into? My boyfriend. Oh, Breckenbridge Hartenfelder? No, Ernest Siebendorfer. <laughs> Do you remember my old boyfriend? Oh, the vacuum cleaner salesman. Oh, he don't sell vacuum cleaners anymore. He's a mechanic now. Yeah? What does he do? He fixes vacuum cleaners. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I say. Nothing like a change in venue. So I'm walking along the street, when all of a sudden I hear somebody say, Hello, cutie. So naturally I turn around and say, You've got your nerve. <laughs> and who do you think it was? Ernest. It was Ernest's brother. Well, I was warm. So I said, hello, George. You know, that's Ernest's brother's name, George. Oh. Uh, George Diefendorfer. What? George Diefendorfer. Who's that? <laughs> Ernest's brother. Oh, yes, that's right. They would have the same last name. <laughs> well, anyways, I said, George, how are you? And he says, fine, Miss Duffy. So I says, what's new? So he says, oh, nothing. Then he says, what's new with you? So I says, oh, nothing. And uh, then he says he's going up to Ernest's place, and would I like to join him? So I says, all right. So we went up there, and that's how I happened to bunk into Ernest. <laughs> well, uh, how is Ernest? I think he's all right. Well, uh, was he glad to see you? I think he was glad. Did he ask you for a date? I think so. What do you mean, you think? Well, I couldn't hear him so well. He was fixing the vacuum cleaner. Oh, Miss Duffy, please. Announcing the arrival of Miss Kate Smith. Oh, Kate Smith. Oh, boy. Miss Kate And, uh, who? Collins, Hello, uh, Archie. Oh, uh, Miss Smith, it is indeed an honor to have your midst among us. Uh... <laughs> Welcome to Duffy. Thank you. You know, some of the greatest people in the world have uh, passed through these portholes. <laughs> but the greatest of all is your very humble self. That's very sweet of you, Archie. How about my welcome? Look, Collins, we let you in, didn't we? <laughs> Well, uh, how do you like the place here, Kate? Uh, terrific, huh? Sensational, huh? Huh? Huh. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Oh, well, here, uh, let me show you around. Now, uh, if you'll, uh, turn to your right, you'll notice on your left over there a, uh, a genuine moose's head, uh, bagged by Duffy himself, you know, whilst on a hunting trip with his wife to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. He shot the moose by mistake. <laughs> Say, Archie, that's quite a head. Uh, where's the rest of the moose? The rest of the moose? Yeah. Um, it's sticking through the wall into the butcher shop next door. 
Well, uh, Miss Smith, as I told you Friday night, you can see when you sing here at Duffy's, you ain't singing no uh, hunky honks, you know. Oh, it's all set that I'm going to sing, eh? Well, not quite. Uh, Duffy has to hear you first. Just a minute, please. Didn't Duffy hear Kate on her own program on Friday night? Uh, no, he didn't. You see, he's got one of them sets, you know, a combination radio and phonograph, and when they're both going at once, he can't make head or tail out of them anymore. <laughs> Well, why doesn't he turn one of them off? Turn one of them off? You don't know Duffy. He says he paid for a combination. That's what he's going to hear. <laughs> now, uh, what do you say about a song, Kate? Well, Archie, I don't know. I don't think Ted would like it. He wouldn't like it? What does he know? The rest of the people will love it. Uh, I'll announce you. Folks, uh, we now present the uh, renoted uh, female chanteuse... <laughs> Miss Kate Smith Now, uh, during her song I want you all to act like the little ladies and gentlemen I know you all are uh, Hey, Callahan Either take your feet off the table or put your shoes on uh, Miss Kate Smith uh, Proceed, Catherine Well, he says he couldn't tell the phonograph was playing the anvil chorus. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, I tell you, I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite sure it'll be okay. Now, uh, here, uh, leave us sign a contract. Just then. a minute, please. Don't you think that we ought to read the contract first? Read it? Uh, well, minor point, but <laughs> if it'll make you feel any better, I'll read it to you. Oh, uh, right. here it is. Uh, paragraph one. Whereas to wit, it may concern ipso facto. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so far, Collins? Oh, nothing could be fairer than that. Good. Uh, paragraph two. Greetings, man, damas, and exposo facto. Uh, that okay by you, Kate? You drive a hard bargain, Archie. Well, business is business. Uh, paragraph four. What happened to paragraph three? I can't read it. I wrote it in Latin. <laughs> Paragraph four. I, Archie, uh, the part of the first party, uh, just uh, agree and or assent and or affirm uh, either and or testify. That's just protection there, of course. Uh, testify that uh, I, Archie, uh, does hereby do engage and or employ and hire the vocal services of one I.E. dot viz. Kate Smith. Uh, here it is. Uh, witness, John Hancock, John Hancock. Now, if uh, you will just uh, sign this contract, uh, everything will be uh, legal, null, and void. Now, just a minute, Archie. The contract doesn't say anything about money. Money? Yeah. Collins, you think I'm going to be smart a beautiful contract like this with the mention of money? Well, I still would like to know how much I'm going to be besmirched with. <laughs> yes, and I'd like to put it in the contract. All right. Here we are. Archie, forget the whole thing. It's ludicrous. Ludicrous? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, ludicrous is as ludicrous does. <laughs> It's all right by me. Leave us forget the whole deal. Kate, don't sing here, and you don't get young editor Archie for your program. Young editor Archie? What is that? Only the greatest, most dramatic radio serial I have ever wrote. <laughs> drama, Collins. Stark Raven drama. <laughs> the thing... The thing that your program is lackingly short of. <laughs> Would you care to hear it? Ted, what can we lose? Only our self-respect. <laughs> Certainly, what can you lose? <laughs> I'll uh, put it on for you. How long does this thing take? Oh, it'll take about ten minutes. Too long. All right, everybody, we're going to act out my newspaper story, uh, Young Editor Archie. Now, uh, Kate, uh, Kate plays my secretary, and Eddie plays the part... Well, now, Ada, uh, just a minute, Archie. Is there a part in it for me? Well, yes, Mr. Collins. Uh, not a very big part, but very sympathetic. Oh, sympathetic, huh? Yeah, well, very sympathetic. That's good. What do I do? Well, you see, you're the rich and wealthy publisher of the newspaper, see? And in the first scene, you visit the home of your grandparents. They live in a little log cabin on Staten's Island. <laughs> Uh, you rent this cabin to them for $12 a month. Uh, as you enter the log cabin, your poor old grandfather is sitting by the fire, see? When you go up, you pull a chair out from under him, break his crutches, and twist his arm, see? Good, huh? Oh, yes. Very sympathetic part. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Then you go over to your poor old grandmother, see? She's nibbling on a stale crust of bread. You take it away from you ram it down a throat. <laughs> then you feel sorry. You can't bear to see it choke, see? So you throw her down in a well. You mean I drown her? Oh, no, you don't drown her. Nothing like that. You look down into the well, and you see that the sweet little old lady is still treading water, so you shoot her. <laughs> They're gonna love me for that. Love you, sure. Uh, now you work fast. You see a little baby in a crib, see? So you whack him over the head with a shovel. <laughs> then you take one final poke at your grandfather, and as you run out, you see a little dog standing in the doorway, see? 
Naturally, a kicker. <laughs> and this is going to make me sympathetic, huh? Sure, it'll make you sympathetic. You see, it ain't a real dog. It's made out of iron, and when you kick him, you stub your toe, and the whole audience feels sorry for you. <laughs> What do you say? You like the part, Collins? No. But you're still a great at young editor Archie, so it's kind of a thing you need for your show, huh? Like a hole in the head. <laughs> well, I'm glad you have an open mind. <laughs> well, uh, suppose we act it out for you now. Is everybody set? Uh, music. <laughs> Presenting young editor Archie. Editor Archie is sitting in his office. He is worried. Suddenly, his faithful Irish typesetter comes over to him, and Editor Archie pats him on the head. He pats the Irish typesetter on the head? Yeah, he loves that dog. He raised it from a pup. <laughs> Suddenly, the door opens gently. Ah, it is my faithful secretary, Kate Dinsmore. Hello, young Editor Archie. Miss Dinsmore, you've been my secretary how long now? Thirty-nine years. Thirty-nine years of loyalty and devotion. Here's a free copy of the paper. Oh, that... Well, good night, Miss Dinsmore. I'm going down to the A&P, uh, the Associated Press. See you later. Oh, that editor, Archie. He hasn't got blood in his veins. It's printer's ink. To him, I'm just a secretary. Miss Dinsmore. Little does he know that this is more than just a job for me. It's being near him that counts. I, I love that boy. What's the difference if I say I'll go away? I know I'll come back on my knees someday. So whatever my man is, I'll be here forever. More. This is really murder. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like it. Well, anyway, in the next scene, I'm back in my office. I thought you'd be back. You've been out of the script now for about 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm a hard work. <laughs> Suddenly the door opens. Ah, it is my faithful Wall Street financial expert, Billy. Billy? Yeah, yeah, sir. Head of the office. Billy's what's new on the stock market. Well, the steel is going up. The rail is going down. The wheat is going up. The commodities is going down. Very interesting. What else? The number today was 259. <laughs> 259. 259. Hey, Billy. What does this number four pay? Is it the code of the underworld? Will Editor Archie track the crime ring? The secret lies with... <laughs> Who is that? My old Irish typesetter. <laughs> he knows all. Uh, well, what did you think of the sketch, Mr. Collins? Archie, I got a delicious punch. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, that's fine. Now, what are you going to do about it? Going out and put a buck on 259. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what about Kate singing here? I'm sorry, Archie. Huh. After the beautiful contract I drew up for you? Well, well, all right. I'll sign it. There you are. Good night, Archie. Well, good night, Kate. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Uh, good night, uh, good night, Ted, old boy, old pal. <laughs> good night. Well, Eddie, I get it. She signed the contract. Look at here. Sign and seal. Kate Hancock. Kate Hancock! <laughs> Eddie! It ain't legal. No? Of course not. You should have signed John Hancock. <laughs> Come on. 
Well, operator, give me five jack of bushwhack and they'll stone the street. Now, before we leave Duffy's tavern, leave us put a couple of nickels in Duffy's jukebox. Duffy's jukebox for the feet meet the feet. Well, the platter's spinning, the needle's in the groove, and here's the first number coming up. Duffy's Tavern was rebroadcast especially for you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America. Thank you.